Today on Mysterious Morsels, we're talking about cutting corners in the kitchen, because God knows I can't cook. So I was having a moment because I was coming unglued at the fact that it seems everything that I seem to like as a treat or a snack or a drink or whatever is either the most expensive or difficult thing to buy or make, and I hate that. Um, sometimes it's just a seasonal thing and I get grumpy when I can't get my Jersey tomatoes or I get grumpy when it's not time for pomegranates anymore. And I just think that the earth is 24 seven at this point. So everything should be available all the time. So that's my grumpy rant. I feel like Star Trek had the right idea when Picard would just be like, Earl Grey tea, hot, snap his fingers. And there's the tea. I want that. It doesn't seem to happen yet, but technology is improving every day. So until I get my little bratty, I want it now, I have two things that I never knew and have been very, very helpful. And it's courtesy of my sister and my rented dog. So I love pomegranates. Love them, love them, love them. If you don't know what a pomegranate is, sometimes they call it a Chinese apple, but in reality, it's a little red fruit, pretty round, and it's got a lot of seeds in it. It's very fall, uh, harvesty kind of thing. Again, I'm in the Northeast, so... Uh, definitely something that starts to show up around late September and they pretty much hang around until December January you could usually see them in the store now there's all sorts of pomegranate stuff apart from sniffy things and soaps but you can go at any time and pay a ton of money for a little teeny container of seeds already pre-packed and pretty for you but that little container of seeds can be upwards of eight to twelve dollars and they're tiny. It's a seed. So, I mean, think about eating sunflower seeds or a handful of nuts. Chances are, gulp and it's gone. So if you're going to pay 8 or $12, depending on the store you're going to, and that's, don't get me started about the organic stuff. See also my previously uh, rant uh, podcast about organics, not really organic. Don't fall for it. Um, a lot of that is just hype. So I'm thinking, I like pomegranates. I would like them more often. Thank you. So I buy cases and cases, not getting a pomegranates, which is cheaper because they could get you for them too at, uh, at a piece. They're more expensive. And for years, I would just cut them in half, put on gloves, hope I don't turn pink. It's extremely uh, juicy and they're very, very, very dark red. It can look like blood. Um, so much so, a little sidebar here, that one of my friends, um, unfortunately, when she was a kid, was driving through Philly on her bike and um, I'm sorry, she was driving through Philly on her car and a person on a bicycle in front of her like basically took a header and was eating pomegranates and came up all red and yucky. She thought the person died or was bleeding and it was nothing. He was fine, but that was a big joke with us. She to this day doesn't eat pomegranates because they very much are deep red and often back in the day used for ink purposes. So you get red like a pistachio, same thing. Well, I would just cut them and peel them, and then you just have to, like, pop out all the seeds and take all the little yucky white part out that's the membrane. Bummer. Hate that word. So I did it for a long time, and it's just eh. Then I found that if you just simply cut them into quarters, like, or smaller pieces if you want, run some water, get a bowl of water, fill a bowl of water in the sink, and just take the smaller chunk submerge it in the water and you don't even need gloves for this unless you want because the water it, the stuff won't stain you just flip it inside out all the white yucky stuff floats to the top the seeds sink to the bottom and they come out in seconds so i can do in about 10 minutes four whole pomegranates and they're pretty big and i actually do this and batch process my pomegranates and i would stick them in little lock and lock containers or um, different, you know, uh, baggies or whatever I wanted them for and have them whenever I want them. And I would just sit down with a fork and eat them. And nobody's going to tell me that they ever got sick from eating too many pomegranates. At least you shouldn't. So it's a pretty healthy snack. They're very yummy if you've never had one. I don't think you're going to eat one seed and be hooked or not, but you definitely could have a forkful or two. And, you know, it's yummy, it's nutritious, it's an antioxidant, and now there's an easy way to do it, or at least now I finally figured it out. And um, I do it all the time. On kind of piggyback on that for another hack, you could freeze them, if you like, 
into ice cube trays and then put them in water if you like flavored water or something. Or if you do cook with them, I can't say I've ever cooked with pomegranate. I'm sure there's some clever chef out there. I'm lucky I can hit play on my crock pot. Yes, I said hit play. Um, is there any other? So, you know, you could do stuff with it. And if you put them in trays or any kind of predetermined thing and freeze it, just like freezing grapes, pretty yummy. If you haven't done that, try it. So that's kind of another hack you could do is pre-freeze things, whether it's for portions or just for um, ice cubes. I have a friend that's obsessed with ginger, and she'll get ginger because it's a pain to peel and cut. And she'll take the time to do a bunch of them and then cut them all up, grate it, shred it, whatever she wants to do, put them in ice cubes and freeze it. So she has it. That way you don't have to go through the crazy every time you want some ginger. And I imagine if you cook with that, that's a big help, helpful thing. Um, so that that's my, my pomegranate rant. Love it. If you like them, try it. If you didn't go out and buy them or whatever, then, then you know, because that's annoying, do that. Um, the, the other biggie is again courtesy of the dog so watermelon pineapple cantaloupe honeydew I, I like fruit and you gotta cut it up now i feel like there's a conspiracy that is among earth that no one talks about and that is the cut fruit conspiracy people will eat cut fruit if it is already cut and pretty and in a bowl for them but if they have to go get a fruit they'll buy an apple banana and orange peel it eat it it's like self-contained but nobody really wants to deal with it except poor old mom and dad that end up cutting it because everybody's going to eat it. So it's one thing if you're having a picnic or a big thing and you slice up watermelon and you slice up a bunch of fruits because it's an event. But in your house, you would probably eat more fruit if it's cut up. People just, oh, it's cut fruit? Yum, yum, yum. <laughs> but if it's not done, they kind of get annoyed and they're like, eh, I don't feel like cutting it. So again, I batch process and I go and cut fruit extravaganzas. However, people hate cutting fruit, myself included, especially watermelon. I don't even like watermelon, fun fact. But the juice goes everywhere. It's disgusting. The table gets gross. I feel like I'm covered. I hate being schmutzy and sticky. So one day, by accident, my sister is cutting up some fruit, hating it. And Little Murphy Dog, who is waiting for something to fall to the ground, loves his fruit. He's very healthy. Likes veggies, too. He's bark, bark, you know, give me something. And a piece of watermelon fell to the ground, and he loves it. So he scarfed it up and ate it. And he starts, like, licking the juice that fell all down the counter, which is gross. And then you're thinking, oh, my God, i got to clean it. I don't want ants. Like, ew. So you're freaking out about that. And at the moment that he happened to drop the watermelon, she dropped the watermelon, and he ate it, nearby was a doggy pee pad on the ground, which we always leave by the door, whether, you know, he's using it at night or if somebody's not up or he knows to use the pee pad. He's, I'd say he's small, but he's 30 pounds. And he's a little mini, not really mini, but he's supposed to be mini um, Sheltie. So she sees it and she's like, hmm, this holds a fair amount of liquid. You know what? I'm going to get a new one. So she goes to the closet, gets a doggy pee pad, puts it on the table, and starts cutting the watermelon and everything on that. It totally soaked up all the goo. There was no juice. Nothing fell. All the seeds and everything got contained within it, and she could just pick it up and go plop right in the trash can. Other than wash her hands and the knife, life was great. She could cut it, slice it again, put it right into her container, and call it a day. It was the best find, and yet, like, right in front of her faces, and nobody thought to look at that. I mean, I didn't, and I just think it's as dumb as, well, yeah, the reason that there's a hole in the, the lid of... of, of cans is so you could put your straw through it okay i don't personally use that but you could turn it around and put your straw through it that's what it's there for you know the reason there's a hole in the end of a big pen is because god forbid you swallow it you won't die and need a tracheotomy there's air still going to your um you know your your your, your lungs morbid but true so there's usually reasons for the designs but like cutting a watermelon nobody really talked to me about that before so now we have no problem because we're like oh get out of pee pad and we'll have fruit cutting extravaganzas to feed the fruit cutting conspiracy because we all know people will only eat fruit if it's cut and they didn't have to do the work. So that's a great hack. And I really like it. I, I thrive on things like this. I think it's fantastic. And um, another little one that, you know, it's probably easy and you can think of is, you know, rolling pins. I, I mean, we have one, but I couldn't tell where it is. So grab a wine bottle. If you need to actually do anything with dough, I certainly shouldn't be allowed near dough because I'm barely allowed to turn on the oven by myself. But if you are going to flatten something out or if you're like, you know, covering up a meat or something and you're trying to tenderize it and you want to flatten it once you cover it up with your, you know, your tin foil or your uh, press and seal or whatever you have, take a wine bottle and you can just roll it. It's a cheap hack to 
um, going and finding the, the the whatever style, French style, American style rolling pin, if you even have a rolling pin handy. And uh, to that effect too, white vinegar. White vinegar is my new best friend. Now, lately, it's my new best friend for very other reasons. And let's just say if certain uh, body fluids don't land where they're supposed to and we have to clean up a, a get rid of a smell on a carpet or any kind of uh, uh, cloth, white vinegar does help get rid of urine smell. However, it gets rid of a lot of things. When I, uh, I'll say expanded uh, my business and started buying slushy machines and things like that, Every now and again, no matter how much you take a hose to it or clean it or whatever, there's always the little part where you pull on the handle to get the slushy stuff out. And typically kids like, you know, blue raspberry and it's that horrible, sweet sugar concentrate or people like pina colada and things like that. Well, you can get to a point and you can clean it, but that little inch and a half in between where things go, uh, you could rinse it nine million times. It's just never going to be as clean as you like it. So that's when I learned the white vinegar hack. Lots and lots of water and white vinegar. So we just fill the tanks with uh, white vinegar and water, and we just run it. We don't freeze it, obviously. But then after we hose it out and let it do that, it just takes out all the sugar and everything because the vinegar breaks it down. I also found out that ants don't like white vinegar. At school, sadly, because it's been raining so much, there's this little trail of ants that feels the need to show up every day in the hallway. Thankfully, it's not in my room. But and the ant man comes every now and again to take care of them with this weird paste on the floor. He said, if you're really in between our visits, you could put white vinegar. I said, okay, that's fine. It smells. It's gross. And he said, actually, they don't find their scent. Ants apparently travel in a line, and I guess they have the feelers to know the next dude in front of them. Well, when you put white vinegar, it cuts that scent, and they get all discombobulated, and it breaks the line, and then you could just squash them, kill them, whatever you wanted to, and they end up all over the place instead of a big pile. So I've been using that for that. Just I've been putting white vinegar all over the floor in my classroom because I do not want any uh, unfriendly, unwelcome visitors. So um, that's just one of those things that uh, I thought I would share. So these are just a couple. Hopefully I could have a few more of these, uh, you know, come your way. And, and I hope that they are useful to you. I did mention lock and locks. I highly recommend buying lock and locks. I love them. I live by them. Although for some reason we end up with Franken locks because for whatever reason my family is completely incompetent and can't get the right lid on the right one. But that's my problem, not yours. So they come colored. They come color coded. They come in different sizes. I don't care what you put in a lock and lock. It could be soup. Turn it upside down. Flip it. Switch it. Play football with it. It's not going to come out. Unlike the old school Tupperware, RIP, I still have some. And if you didn't burp them right, they were going to get all over the place. And the last thing you want is gooey, yucky wing juice and soup all over your car. Trust me, I've catered enough. So I can't say enough good about Lock and Locks. Um, I, I get them all the time. Um, definitely invest. Trust me, especially if you're getting new uh, containers or if you're giving a gift to people that are going out on their own, getting their own apartment, college kids, uh, you know, new uh, couples. Believe me, they will not hate it. So that's something you want to look into. Hope you enjoyed today's episode, and if you're as stoked about getting all of your container needs as I am with Lock & Lock, check out the link I left you below. They're fantastic, and I can't recommend them enough.